On 1st September 1939, Germany attacked Poland and started the Second World War, which went on to kill an estimated 85 million people. You might think in the days before the attack, Hitler's mind would have been obsessed with the idea of world domination. But less than a month before this, in August 1939, Hitler, the Führer of Germany, said to British Ambassador Neville Henderson, I am an artist and not a politician. Once the Polish question is settled, I want to end my life as an artist. In 1939, the all-powerful leader who sent shudders of fear through his opponents had come very far from that weak, poor, 17-year-old boy in 1907 in Vienna, Austria. That fatherless boy who would paint postcards to sell to tourists so he could make some money and not go hungry that night. Hitler's life's dream was to become a painter. It was actually not world domination or ending Judaism. In 1907 and again in 1908, he applied for the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. He failed the entrance exam both times. In his book, Mein Kampf, Hitler claimed that the rejection struck him as a bolt from the blue. This shock and hurt at not being respected by the most respected artists of his time would affect him more than most people realize. In 1914, when the First World War broke out, Hitler served in it, but he always carried fine paper and canvas with him and spent hours of leave time painting. The themes of his wartime paintings included farmers' houses, lone streets, dressing stations. So, two questions become necessary now. Was his art any good? In other words, did this man who was evil personified actually carry an artist's compassionate, intense soul deep within him? And secondly, what does his art say about his mind? The answer to both these questions is similar. Hitler's art actually wasn't very appreciated by the experts, which is why the Vienna Academy rejected him twice. In 2002, Frederick Spotts showed several of Adolf Hitler's paintings to an art critic, but without telling the critic who the painter really was. So the critic had no idea he was looking at Hitler's paintings. And he said that they were quite good. But he noticed a weird style in which he drew human figures. And that represented a profound disinterest in people. Mark Fisher of the Washington Post once wrote, Is it possible to look at these antiseptic street scenes and see the roots of Hitler's obsession with cleanliness and his belief that his mission in life was to cleanse Germany and the world of Judaism? In other words, Hitler did not have the soul of an artist. The feelings, the rhythm, the pain, none of it. But, and here's where we should pay attention. When he didn't get to paint on a canvas, he just painted his hideous ideas onto the world. Ultimately, he used his artistic tendencies into creating the Nazi movement, giving an almost imperialistic theatrical tone to the Nazi rallies, his hypnotic oratorial style, even designing the Nazi flag himself for his desire to clean up the human race. If you think about it, Nazism was shaped by his aesthetic sensibilities. He was always telling us he's a monster. We just didn't know how to listen. And if you listened and liked this video, then hit like and subscribe it and share.